So I, I think the talk will be about an hour or so, maybe a little under. Um, so I'm going to start out with uh, a, ki a kind of quiet, slow piece. Um, so this is a piece called Timeline. I think of it as kind of an homage to Ankawara. It's a very slow kind of contemplative piece. And um, it's been in different iterations depending on the what I feel like. Uh, maybe it's it starts at the time of my birth or the time of the exhibition. But since I'm a time-based artist, I thought I would start slow with this. Also, the disco ball. Um, that's a... Um, a prop, it's an, um, something that figures a lot in my work over the years. There's something sort of sad about a lone disco ball in an empty disco with the lone puff of smoke coming out. And it sort of s indicates something's over or a certain failure, which is a big theme in my work. So looking back at it, you know, you get a little nostalgic, and then also you start thinking about age. I'm a I'm a professor, and I'm around a lot of young people, and every semester I take my students to get a class portrait at Sears, and I've been doing this for close to 20 years. They stay the same age, and I get a little older. So. I'm in town here for an exhibition. How did I become an artist? Well, let's start from the beginning. This is a, a picture of my uh, family from memory. Um, that's me on the left. That's my creative brother, a uh, painter. My father, um, my, my father had a bit of a temper. My lovely mother and my sister. Um, I come from a middle-class Jewish family, so I once asked my father what our name was before Smith, kind of a waspy name, and he said Sutton. Anyways, my father was very important for my upbringing. He, he was kind of obsessed with time. He sort of had, he had a watch for work. He had a watch to take a bath in. He had a watch to go out at night. He had a watch to sleep in. He was obsessed with time. He judged character according to punctuality. And that, that has an effect on you know, a young person. This is a, this is a picture of my father and I. Um, and it's called, um, there's an accompany um, essay. It's called Fun at Home. Um, in this picture, my dad is giving me my allowance. I'm always happy to get my allowance. When my birthday comes, I'm going to my dad for a raise. Most kids beg, I know, um, for an allow get an allowance. When I get to be 10, I hope to, I hope to, get a dollar for an allowance. Most people I know like money very much. I like money too. I like the green kind most people do. Eventually, I developed these two personas, performance personas, Baby Icky, uh, Baby Icky doesn't really talk, and Mike, Mike this kind of bland man who came out of a pun, blanded gentry. Um, and, well, let's start with the baby.
So I should say I really didn't jump right into doing this pr these two pers uh, personas, these two characters. I was doing a lot of um, um, these kind of performances with, they were sort of these assemblages of different ideas, gestures and uh, a bit of language, a little physical comedy, a little dancing, and they'd be, I put them together under a title and call them a performance. Eventually I got a little tired of that, so I, I, I wanted something more cohesive with a beginning and an end. And uh, I, um, I st the characters were good. I figured they would help me do that, so I started to develop these characters. Anyways, um, Mike is the m character I work with the most, possibly because he speaks. Um, and it's getting to the point now where um, meeting people or um, and then they say, oh, you're the guy in diapers. It's sort of, you know. <laughs> Anyways, I, Mike, um, this kind of everyman character, um, has developed a lot of adventures. He's gone through a lot of adventures. And um, about 10 years ago, um, there was this show put together called Mike's World um, uh, with a lot of, with the like, I don't know, 20 years of work of Mike, of you know, the different um, projects where Mike uh, was featured. And um, it was sort of loosely modeled after a lot of the presidential libraries in, in the states. There's one, I work at the Univers University of Texas and there's the LBJ library there. And I thought, oh, Mike, his, his, his retrospective survey would be similar to the presidential library because there's a timeline, there's a, um, uh, a central character, a bunch of installations, a lot of, you know, objects and little gifts and things. And I was, I worked on this show with a collaborator named Joshua White, who I did a lot of projects with. And he said, well, you need a, you need an um, orientation film. So we made an orientation film that you watch before you enter the show. We all live in the world, and some of us also live in our own worlds. It is in that spirit that we welcome you now to Mike's world. Hello. A world of wonder, inhabited by a person who was born to wonder. Hmm, I wonder what I'll do today. A simple person struggling to understand a complex world. A very special someone, uniquely well suited to be an everyman. A man whose mission is to wonder continually who he is. And who is he? He is Mike. Secure in this identity, he can shake hands with life on its own terms in 45 second intervals, one day at a time. This imbues his spirit with hope. I look out on the horizon and I see the future. Having claimed his bona fides as every man, Mike's task is to bear witness to an everyday world. What does this world ask of Mike? Nothing less than a total commitment to puttering, hoping, tinkering, more hoping, dabbling, and of course, wondering. What's my toilet doing on the television? Plus the occasional foray into precariously optimistic entrepreneurship, earnest personal horizon expansion, and the pursuit of excellence, a quest never relinquished. That is the essence of Mike's greatness. Mike's world is a world of tiny details, details that others tend to overlook. This is the wind beneath Mike's wings, the fountain of his identity, the source of his satisfaction. Coffee, a meal in itself. Mike's world turns out to be not just one world, but a multifaceted amalgam of many different worlds. There's world of music. The world of dance. The 
world of high art. The world of haute cuisine. Garlic. And let us not forget Mike's steadfast absorption with the world of television from appreciation. Hmm. Let's see what's on TV. To production. One day, Mike's soul became so flooded with hope that he was inspired to enter the world of business. That's when I got the idea for my company. Music, color, news co. As the world at large progressed, Mike made a valiant effort to follow suit, venturing into the complicated world of technology. As the information superhighway continues to expand, artists will barely have enough time to sleep as they become the content providers for the future. Let's not forget Mike's deep, though fleeting, personal commitment to the world of politics. 1984, things are getting pretty scary. This brings us to the world of today, popularly known as the post 9-11 world, to which Mike has adjusted with characteristic ease, following the dictum of his 18th century counterpart, Candide, to wit, all is for the best and the best of all possible worlds. Hmm. That's odd. I'm prepared. And that is precisely how we, at this respected institution, hope you now feel prepared. Prepared to enter Mike's world. As you do so, Take as your guide the words of the pre-Socratic philosopher Heraclitus. Men who love wisdom should acquaint themselves with a great many particulars. Because, as you are about to discover, we all live in Mike's world. So I'm going to talk briefly about the project that's going to be opening up <clears throat> this weekend at, I think it's this weekend, at uh, <laughs> Humex. Um, yeah. <laughs> and um, about maybe we've all been reading about trade agreements that were, was go they were going on for a while between our countries and our, our insane president. And about 25 years ago, I did this piece called um, ITEA, the International Trade and Enrichment Association. And their motto was elevation through association. And this association would bring businesses and artists together for mutually beneficial opportunities. Money to artists and presenters and prestige to businesses. So I thought, huh, I got invited to do a project at Humex. Maybe it's time for ITEA to come out again. All this trade talk, it's in a, in a place called Humex. I think there's, I think it's a juice business if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Anyways, I thought um, it would be a good idea Maybe this was, and I was desperate for an idea, so I thought, let's bring ITA back. So um, ITA is um, now in the timeshare business, and I, I was curious about the idea of timeshares um, because of, um, I, for Mike, I was thinking about a timeshare, you know, retirement and what would he do, and I looked online about timeshares, and the first thing that came up when I looked on Google was how to get out of a timeshare. So I thought, <laughs> perfect. This is perfect for Mike, you know? So I thought, he's got to have a timeshare. So I was, the exhibition is in the Terrace Gallery. It's kind of 
sort of an interesting, very complicated, difficult space, a lot of windows. So I thought this would make a nice, you know, apartment. So thus, we turned it into Humex Terrace, ITEA, fully curated. Um, <clears throat> so uh, come see the show. There'll be some trade show booths. There'll be uh, a new video but with music by the same um, composer. And um, maybe I'll stop on that. 